How do you compare and order fractions? Well, that's a great question. And let's begin by looking at some simple examples, and then we'll work our way up to the tricky problems. On the screen, we have two rectangles, and each rectangle is divided into six equal pieces. In the first rectangle, we have two boxes shaded. In the second rectangle, we have three boxes shaded. So let's write fractions that show the number of boxes shaded in each rectangle. Well, here we have two boxes shaded, and we have six boxes all together. So the fraction represented by this picture is two sixths. Here we have three shaded boxes and six boxes altogether. So this picture represents the fraction three sixths. Now we can easily compare these two fractions just by looking at the pictures. There are more boxes shaded in this rectangle than in this one. We would say that this fraction is larger than this fraction. Now what if you didn't have the pictures? What if you only had the fractions themselves? How would you compare the fractions then? When you are asked to compare fractions and the denominators are the same, in this case the denominator in each fraction is 6. When the denominators are the same, all you have to do is compare the numerators. The larger the numerator, the bigger the fraction. So we would say that 3 6 is greater than 2 6. Or another way to say it is 2 6 is less than 3 6. Now let's compare two fractions whose denominators are different. This time we have two circles. In this example, the circle on the left is divided into four equal sections. So the denominator in this case is 4. One of those sections is shaded. So the numerator is 1. So this picture is showing us the fraction 1 fourth. The circle on the right is divided into 5 equal sections. So the denominator is 5. One of those sections is shaded. So the numerator is 1. So this circle is showing us the fraction 1 fifth. You'll notice that this time the denominators are different, but the numerators are the same. In fact, the numerator in each fraction is 1. We call that a unit fraction. Whenever you're comparing unit fractions, such as 1 fourth, and one-fifth, the bigger the denominator, the smaller the fraction. So the more pieces you have, or the more pieces you divide your circle into, the smaller each piece will be. So this time, one-fourth is the bigger fraction. One-fourth is greater than one-fifth. Now let's compare two fractions with different denominators that are not unit fractions. So for example, let's compare two-thirds and three-fourths. So what do we do in this case? Well, it sure would be a lot easier if the denominators were the same, because then we could just compare the numerators like we did in the earlier example. So how could we change these fractions so that the denominators are the same? Well, we do that by making equivalent fractions. We need to find a denominator that's a multiple of 3 and 4. 3 times 4 equals 12, so that means 12 is a multiple of both 3 and 4. So let's change each fraction into a new fraction that has 12 as its denominator. Since we multiplied 3 by 4 to get 12, we have to multiply the numerator by 4 to get our new numerator. So 4 times 2 is 8. And since we multiplied 4 by 3 to get 12 in this fraction, we should multiply the numerator by 3, and that will give us 9. 
So two-thirds means the same thing as eight-twelfths. And three-fourths means exactly the same thing as nine-twelfths. So we've made equivalent fractions. And now that our fractions have the same denominator, we can just compare the numerators. And we know that eight is less than nine. So that means eight twelfths is less than nine twelfths. And sure enough, we can see from the picture that eight twelfths is less than nine twelfths. And if eight twelfths is less than nine twelfths, that means that two thirds must be less than three fourths. Since two thirds is the same as eight twelfths, and three fourths is the same as nine twelfths. This time we're going to compare four fractions. The fractions are seven eighths, two thirds, five sixths, and one half. Then we're going to order them from least to greatest. So you'll notice that all of our denominators are different. So our first step is to find a common denominator. So that's a multiple of 8, 3, 6, and 2. Well, all four of those numbers divide evenly into 24. So we're going to convert all of our fractions into 24ths. So to convert 7 eighths to 24ths, we multiplied 8 by 3 to get 24. So we're going to multiply the numerator by 3 and get 21. We multiply 3 by 8 to get 24. So we'll multiply the numerator by 8. 2 times 8 is 16. We multiply 6 by 4 to get 24. So we'll multiply the numerator by 4. And 4 times 5 is 20. We multiply 2 by 12 to get 24. So we'll multiply the numerator 1 by, 20, by 12 to get 12. So now we've created equivalent fractions. And now the denominator in each case is 24. So we can simply compare the numerators. So the smallest numerator is 12. So 12 24ths must be our smallest fraction. And we're ordering from least to greatest. So the next largest numerator is 16. So that means 16 24ths is the next largest fraction. The next largest numerator is 20. So 20 24ths is the next largest fraction. And finally, 21 is the largest numerator. So 21 24ths is the largest fraction. So 12 24ths is less than 16 24ths, which is less than 20 24ths, which is less than 21 24ths. And writing our original fractions from least to greatest, we have 1 half is the smallest, because that's 12 24ths. And that's less than 2 thirds, which is 16 24ths. And that's less than 5 sixths, which was 20 24ths, which is less than 7 eighths, which was 21 24ths. And that's how you compare and order fractions.